Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be recommending some books that are on Audible Escape. <laughs> If you didn't know, Audible Escape, which is a package on Audible, um, is ending on November the 1st. I can assume that many of us in the book community, especially the romance community, are jamming as many audiobooks in from Audible Escape as possible before the expiration date, essentially. I understand why Audible is doing this, but it's still really sad, so uh, I will be trying to read as many books from Audible Escape as possible. I've gotten a lot of questions and I've gotten a lot of requests to talk about some recommendations on Audible Escape because there are so many books on Audible Escape you don't really know where to start sometimes. So I have a lot of recommendations for y'all today that are on Audible Escape and then towards the end of the video I'm planning on telling y'all about some of the books I plan on reading uh, before the month runs out that are on Audible Escape um, that I'm very excited to read. So hopefully those are recommendations for y'all as well. But I haven't read those ones yet, so stay tuned for those. So first, I'm going to be talking about Brittany C. Cherry. I love Brittany C. Cherry. I think almost every single one of her books, if not all of her books, are on Audible Escape. And most of the time, they're hard-hitting, emotional, like five out of five star romances. One that I've read that is amazing is Eleanor and Grey. This is a nanny second chance romance. Like the beginning takes place like in high school where she's like the nerdy girl and he's the jock and they kind of become friends and then something happens to where she moves away and she comes back years later and he's a totally different gruff person and he has two daughters his wife recently passed away and she becomes their nanny and they start up a romance together so I absolutely adore this book it's one of my favorite books of all time next we have the Elements series by Brittany C. Cherry I've only read three out of the four I still need to read the fourth one which will probably happen by the end of the month that's probably gonna be one of the books that I plan on finishing um, to complete the series but book number one is The Air He Breathes which is a single parent romance with a very gruff very abrasive there you go there's the word uh, male main character who is our heroine's neighbor and he just went through a tragedy she just went through a tragedy and they strike up something it's heartbreaking <laughs> but really good then I haven't read the second one um, I don't remember the title of it, but I'll probably talk about it towards the end of the video. Book number three is The Silent Waters, which is my favorite in the series. This one has three different timelines. First one is when our heroine is like 10 and her dad gets married to a new woman and she gets a brother and sister through this and she develops a huge crush on her brother's best friend. And then something happens to her when she's 10 to where uh, she goes through something very traumatic to where she has not spoken since, like not uttered a single word since. And then it jumps to when she's 16 and then jumps to when I believe she's in her early or late 20s. Um, and she also is agoraphobic um, ever since she won't leave her house at all. He is also a rock star and this is the only rock star romance that like one of two that I've actually really enjoyed um, because the rock star had like nothing to do with the story at all, which is amazing in my book. I love this one. It's my favorite one in the series. I absolutely adore it. And then the fourth one in the series is The Gravity of Us, which is another emotional gut-wrenching one. Uh, this was the first one I read in the series. So our main character, Hero, his wife just recently left him and their newborn daughter when she was in the NICU. And so our heroine, you realize how she's connected to all of this when you read it. I don't want to spoil it, but she's connected to them somehow. And um, she kind of becomes the nanny or helps him take care of her and they fall in love even though he's very abrasive and doesn't have feelings essentially. <laughs> I really love this series so much and I can't wait to continue with the last one. One that I really enjoyed that nobody really talks about is Nailed Down by Shell Bliss and Eden Butler. Sorry I'm looking at my computer by the way because there's a lot on this list. Um, this is a friends to lovers uh, romance and it's fairly short. Sorry my character heroine works with our hero. I believe they both work on like an HGTV kind of show and they're like best friends. Um, but then her cousin ends up passing away and kind of leaves her with like a bucket list to do because our heroine is not known for going out and doing things and being adventurous. So her cousin basically is like, do this as a gift for me when I pass away. So she may or may not have her best friend help her complete this list and it might have some romantic things on this list. And it was honestly really sweet, really cute. I had a very fun time reading this one. An author that I know is on Audible Escape is Lauren Blakely. Now, <laughs> I have kind of a rocky relationship with Lauren Blakely. I haven't really loved a lot of her books. Out of the four that I've read on Audible Escape, I've only really enjoyed 
two. I'm just gonna talk about the two that I really enjoyed. Um, first one is Mr. O, but that's the second one in a companion series. Um, I didn't really enjoy the first one all that much. This one is like a romance between a innocent heroine and then a man who's known as Mr. O. You can assume what O means. Um, <laughs> he is a comic book writer and illustrator for a comic book series called Mr. O. Um, it's really funny. Um, I found this one really, really, really funny. And then one that I recently read by her that I really enjoyed was The Engagement Gift. Um, and this one is like two and a half hours, maybe three hours. It's like a little, little novella between a woman and her fiance and he kind of helps her um, finally have her biggest all-time bedroom fantasy. It was really steamy, really good, really short, really sweet. I really liked it. One that's on there that I really liked is Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. Who hasn't known about this book, Penelope Douglas? I need to read more of her books, but I really like this one. This one's like a more a new adult romance because they are in high school. This is a pen pal romance in like elementary school. Our two characters um, ended up becoming pen pals through like their different schools then completely one day out of the blue years later our hero stops writing to our heroine and she has no idea why turns out he ends up going to the high school that our heroine is at and she is completely different than what like her letters say and the, what her letters perceive her as and he is very hurt by this um, but he does but she doesn't know who he is but he does it's that dynamic there I actually really enjoyed this I know some people don't so be aware this does take place in high school and there are some steamy things so next we're gonna talk about Full Tilt by Emma Scott this is the other rock star romance the one other one that I actually really enjoyed. I normally despise rock star romances, but I really like this one. So our main character, heroine, she is really heavy into her addiction. So trigger warning for addiction, specifically to alcohol. She is the lead singer in this girl rock band. And one night she kind of gets too much in her cups like normal um, after a show and her boss puts her in a limo. And that's where our hero comes in. He is actually the limo driver and he takes her to her place, but it's all locked and nobody's there. And he's not just gonna leave this blackout woman on her doorstep. So he just takes her home with him to put on his couch and let her sleep it off on his couch. And she wakes up and they start becoming friends. He actually also has a heart condition so that's another um, element to this story that I actually really loved because I have some issues with my heart and circulatory system so I really connected to him in that way. I will be talking about this series in the later half of this video because I need to read <laughs> the sequel. <laughs> I really enjoy this one. It's my favorite romance books of all time. I absolutely adore it. Next we have a little fun novella, um, very short, very sweet, is 30 Day Boyfriend by Whitney G. I thought this was super duper fun. This is a, I believe, fake dating romance between two friends and they both work in the same company. He's her boss and they end up having to be fake engaged, I'm pretty sure. Um, so it's a fake engagement story. That's all I really remember, but I do remember really enjoying this one. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Next we have On the Way to You by Candy Steiner. I heard about this book from Shelby from Shelby Taggart Reads because um, she knows that I love books that have disability representation in it. And this was the first, one of the first um, romance books that I read where it was a physical impairment where our heroine is an amputee. Um, she was in a car accident and she has a prosthetic leg. And also our hero suffers a lot with depression. So trigger warning for depression in this book. This is also one of the only road trip romances that I actually like. I don't like road trip romances either. <laughs> this one, our heroine has been really wanting to go to school in Washington DC, but she doesn't have enough money to get there yet. She's almost done saving up to travel to Washington DC to go see her best friend and possibly go to college there. Her mom has kind of weighed her down her whole life, like trying to take care of her because her mom just wastes away in her house um, and doesn't really care about her at all. So then one day this man comes into the diner that she works at. He tells her that he's traveling to Washington DC and she's like, oh my goodness, I've always wanted to go there. And he's like, well, why don't you come with me? And she's like, what? No, you're a stranger. Like, why would I go with you? And then after thinking about it, she's like, this might be the only opportunity that I have to get to Washington without paying a whole bunch of money. It's a road trip romance between them. Um, it's really really good and really emotional so please beware going in get your tissues ready next we have another favorite of all time we have archer's voice by mia sheridan i love this one this is a contemporary adult romance a small town romance um, where our main character hero archer when he was a kid he was in a car accident to where his vocal cords were damaged to where he's not able to speak anymore and ever since then he's been kind of the town outcast and nobody talks to him anymore and he lives alone kind of on the outskirts of town until our main heroine brie comes in to town and she notices 
him and notices that nobody is talking to him and he doesn't have any friends so she takes it on herself to go become his friend and communicate with him because um, he knows sign and her dad was actually deaf so she knows how to sign so um, he finally has found somebody to communicate with that wants to communicate with him and oh, it's so good because Archer is also a very innocent man and I love innocent heroes so much I know Brie from In Love and Words has a whole video on innocent heroes and I I love them too um, so I really really recommend this one next we have one of my favorites of all time we have Heidi's Guide to Fourth Letter Words by Tara Civic and Andy Arndt oh my gosh y'all if you were to read any book on this list please 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 read this one before the month is out because I think you can only get it on audio and why not get it off of Audible Escape and it is one of the like literally the funniest book I've ever read in my entire life like it is amazing this is a contemporary adult romance it's fairly short please please check it out okay so our main character Heidi just got fired from being a kindergarten teacher which is a job that she loves um, but she just got fired she has this really hot next-door neighbor that she's always wanted to ask out but she hasn't had really the nerve to so she really needs a job so she gets a job at this audiobook company not knowing that it's like a dirty audiobook company and she's very innocent and um, very uh, naive about those things. One night after work, after her new job, she decides to get drunk and ends up drunkenly starting a podcast where she reads dirty books to help her get familiar and become comfortable with her work. And it is so funny. And through her doing this and reading these audiobooks, she like gains the confidence to possibly go ask out her next door neighbor. It's the funniest book I've ever read. I love it so much. I was cackling my head off. I love it. Please go check it out. So knowing me, we're definitely going to be talking about some alien romance book. I have Assigned a Mate by Grace Goodwin. This is an interstellar bride program alien romance. So basically this heroine is in the witness protection program. In order to save her from the man who's out to get her, the government basically puts her into the interstellar bride program where she gets sent off to another world to become an alien king's mate. These are real steamy. It is. It has some dubious consent. It's kind of on the darker side of alien romance. It's not really the f light fluffy alien romance book if you're looking for that. So just, it, they're really steamy. They're really fun though, in my opinion. <laughs> I think the first couple books in the series are possibly on there. Maybe. I haven't checked as of recently, so. Next, we have a contemporary romance duet that I really enjoyed. I got this recommendation from Brie from In Love and Words. Obviously, this is the Hearts and Darkness duet by Laura Kay. And the first book is about our hero and heroine. They get stuck in an elevator together and it's completely dark and they don't know what the other person looks like. This book is steamy. It is so good. I love it. I think I'm probably going to reread it this month because I love it so much. It's a duet, so I believe the second one is on there as well. It's forced proximity, so if you really, 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 really like that trope, I really recommend this one. Next, we have a series that I love. We have the Pucked series by Helena Hunting. This is a hockey romance series, the first book being Pucked. Each book is about a guy on the hockey team. I can't remember which hockey team it is um, but they're all on the same hockey team and they're all friends and each book is about their romance with a woman and they are really funny great banter book number two is not necessarily my favorite it's not book number five is book number one and book number five are amazing so yes this is a very beloved hockey romance series on booktube that I really 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 recommend. Next we have a trilogy. We have the new Camelot trilogy by Sierra Simone. This is an age gap romance. Basically this is a romance between our heroine, the hero who is the president of the United States, and his best friend the vice president. So uh, it's a little three. <laughs> three person book very interesting i honestly though i these aren't like my favorite book number one is great number two and number three not for me i feel like this book would would have been way better if it was only one book or if it was possibly two i think three was too much um if anything from this trilogy just probably read the first one if you're kind of like crunched on time. Number one was really, really, really fun. Next, we have the Lux series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is more of a YA route if you want to go YA. I read the first three or two books in the series this year. These are young adult alien romances. So it's it gave me so many Twilight vibes. It's basically like Twilight, 
but instead of Edward being a vampire, he's an alien. Um, I really liked them a lot. Really fun. I really recommend them. The first book is called Obsidian. I really enjoyed them. So if you're looking more of a YA route, I really recommend the Lux series. I've only read books up to book two or up to book three. So I might want to finish the series before the month runs out. We will see. Next I have Dirty English by Ilsa Madden Mills. This is a new adult Pride and Prejudice retelling. So it takes place in college and that's all I remember about it. Also, actually um big trigger warning for sexual assault in here literally page one literally page one so please please beware going into that that's all i really remember about it it's not my favorite but i know that other people might really enjoy it i know that elsa madden mills has been getting a lot of hype i think with dear ava recently i haven't read that one yet um but if you really like her maybe check this one out before the month is out next i have a vi keelan and penelope ward i believe there are so many books by vi keelan and penelope ward on audible escape i've only read one book by them which is my favorite souvenir this is a romance where our heroine's fiance just left her and um, so she decides to go on the honeymoon, I believe to Vail by herself, but then there's a big snowstorm and something happens to where she can't get a room. And then she sees a guy at the checkout desk pretending to be somebody he's not to try and get a room. Um, and so she pretends to be his sister. They end up getting rooms together, they meet, and they kind of have a whirlwind, all of a sudden romance, and um, it's pretty cute. The second half of the book wasn't really my favorite because I wasn't expecting it. I didn't know that's the way the book was gonna go. I thought this was really fun though. By the way, this isn't a summer book by the cover. It's not a summer book, this is a winter book. So Mimi, read this one in preparation for Christmas time and winter time. <laughs> Emma Chase has a few books on Audible Escape. I love Emma Chase. Um, her Royally series is my favorite. Unfortunately, those are not on Audible Escape, but the first book in the spinoff series is, which is called Dirty Charmer, and this is a bodyguard royalty romance. Our heroine is like a duchess, I think. Our hero gets hired to be her bodyguard, and it is a romance between them, and he kind of helps her get out of her shell because she's kind of known for being very prim and proper and kind of snobbish, and um, he kind of helps her break out of that shell. And so I really liked that one, but I kind of liked the real trilogy more but that's my opinion but that's not on audible escape unfortunately next we have the getting um like that her getting schooled and getting played duet getting schooled is the first one that is a second chance romance where our hero works in a high school and he's i believe the football coach and he's teaching in the high school he went to high school in and then his high school girlfriend ends up becoming the substitute theater arts teacher for the year and then they spark up a romance all over again um, and they were like high school sweethearts and then the second book in that series is getting played now this one starts out with there being a one night stand and uh, you know like from the first chapter like our heroine gets pregnant and it's like the inner workings of that. This one is really fun too. I kind of like the first one more, but this is the first like I think where our heroine is pregnant romance book that I actually really liked. Oh wait, also, so Royally Yours, which is book number four in the Royally series is actually also an audible escape. I guess you could kind of read that by itself. So Royally Yours takes place like decades before the first book in the series because this is a story of the queen of the country that um our hero from the first book is the prince too so like the queen that you meet in book one like the old lady like this is her like romance book between her and the love of her life i really 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 like that one as well next we have muffin top by avery flynn this has plus size rep in it and this one is where our heroine becomes friends with this fireman who's like gorgeous she has to go to her high school reunion and in high school she was very much picked on for being overweight and so the hero's like why don't i just, why don't i pretend to be your fake date and uh, we can prove them wrong that you can do whatever you want to and you can get whoever you want to it doesn't matter what size you are and she's like oh my gosh yes and so um it's fake dating that turns into something more and I really enjoyed it because it was really funny. <laughs> Next we have the Ravenwood series by Talia Hibbert. I believe all three books are on there. I adore this series. The first book is called A Girl Like Her and this one has um, autism representation in it because our heroine has autism and um, she writes comic books or web comics and she's like very standoffish and doesn't really have all that many friends and then she gets a new neighbor who really likes to cook for people and he becomes friends with her she does not really want to be friends with him she just wants to wallow alone in her apartment all by herself the second one is a nanny romance which is called untouchable i love that one and then the third one is my favorite one which is called that kind of guy because our heroine has my chronic illness and i have never seen that in a book before and i 
really enjoyed it. I really like the representation. This is an age gap romance where our heroine is older and our hero is realizing that he is demisexual. So there's representation in there for you. Next we have Bitter Rival. This is an enemies to lovers kind of childhood crush romance. Basically our hero and heroine, their wineries are right next door to each other. Their family wineries are right next door to each other. Ever since they were little, they have been told by their families to hate the other person um, because of something that happened way back in the day. It's kind of Romeo and Juliet-esque story, uh, but they can't help but be very intrigued by each other. It's a very short audiobook that I enjoyed my time reading, so maybe you will too. So I know I talked about Full Tilt by Emma Scott, but I also have to talk about Forever Right Now. Whew, this book is like a emotional gut punch. Like, it is so good. Our main character heroine, Darlene, she has recently got out of rehab, gotten out of jail because she used to be addicted to drugs and um, her ex-boyfriend got her into that. She knows she never wants to go back to that way of life ever again and she just wants to move to San Francisco to become a dancer because she used to be a dancer before all of this happened to her. And so she moves to San Francisco and the neighbor below her is our hero in the, of the story and he is a college student named Sawyer studying to become a lawyer. A couple months ago, a girl he had a one night stand with ends up leaving a baby on his doorstep. So he's a college student with a little baby girl trying to take care of. So it's a single parent romance dealing with a bunch of emotional stuff because he doesn't want to get attached to Darlene or like Darlene because he doesn't want to confuse his daughter Olivia because he doesn't think that anything will ever work out for him because he's so busy and he has so many responsibilities. So whew, this book is great. I I will recommend this. I want more people to read it so we can talk about it with other people. Next I have the Knitting in the City series by Penny Reed. I've only read book one and two or book one and 1.5 I think. First one is called Neanderthal Seeks Human. This is a romance that either takes place in Chicago or New York. One of the two cities. It's a big city romance. I really love our heroine in this book because she's really quirky and she really likes to spurt out factoids when she like babbles and is nervous. Basically the book starts out with her getting fired from her job because um, the, the boss is the boyfriend she just dumped and so the boss fires her because she just dumped his son. She gets escorted down by a bodyguard she's always find really really attractive who is our hero and um, he helps her get a new job um, at his company and they end up sparking something. This is very alpha male. If you don't like alpha male heroes, I don't know if this book would be for you, but I was mainly in it for our heroine because she was just so funny, so quirky. I really loved her. I really want to continue on with the series, but there are so many books in the series. I'm not going to get it done before the end of October. I know that. Next we have The Truth About Cowboys by Lisa Renee Jones. This is my first and only cowboy romance and I really liked this one. It's basically a contemporary adult romance that just takes place on a ranch. Our heroine just uh, either got fired or left her job and she's looking for a new start in her life so she decides to rent a cabin in Texas for a couple of months and um, on her way there she gets stuck in the mud on the side of the road like her car gets stuck in the mud and this guy comes out to help her get out of the mud he's just really abrasive and rude and she's like afterwards she's like well thank you for helping me but you kind of suck and because <laughs> he's kind of mean to her she makes it all the way to the cabin and turns out he's the one who owns the cabin so it's kind of like an enemies to lovers romance he's also an ex baseball player so um there's that dynamic to it but i really enjoyed this one too next you have the mckenzie series by jennifer ashley i think that's the series the first one and the only one that i've read is um uh, the madness of lori and mckenzie this is a historical romance um, where our main character hero, Ian, has autism and back then nobody knew what autism was. Um, so he was, kind of, he was put in an insane asylum by his father. And so when his father dies, his brother takes him out. He's just known in society as being mad because he lived in a madhouse, which is very unfortunate. At the beginning of this book, it starts out with Ian um, seeing an acquaintance of his and the acquaintance like tells him like, oh, I'm gonna get married soon, I, I just, um, proposed to a woman she's gonna be my wife soon. Ian is like oh no this isn't good because that man he was talking to actually like has a separate house where he like keeps a bunch of mistresses and he like told Ian that he plans to keep all the mistresses and not tell her. So Ian decides to go seek out that woman and tell her like you're marrying a skeevy dude like he's bad for you and so when he goes and finds her and seeks her out he tells her everything and then he's like wait a minute I'm really attracted to you I want you and so uh 
it's them possibly getting in a relationship together and it is so amazing our heroine is so sweet and considerate and amazing and i love her so much her and ian are one of my favorite couples of all time for sure and i really want to continue on with the series next we have a trilogy we have the kingmaker chronicles by amanda boucher this is a fantasy romance trilogy first one is called a promise of fire the first one is about our main character named cat and she is a soothsayer in the circus because she is she's hiding she actually has magical powers she's hiding because she's actually something called the kingmaker which is a magical being that only exists once every 200 years she's in this traveling circus to hopefully disguise herself and nobody will know her and recognize her our hero named griffin actually just conquered a neighboring land and is looking um, for something or someone to help keep his sister on the throne. He put his sister on the throne. Then one day he stumbles upon this traveling circus, sees Kat, and knows immediately who she is, so he kidnaps her. <laughs> so it is a kidnapping, road trip, traveling romance because they travel to his land. And it is so funny. The banter is top notch, the magic is amazing. The books are fantastic. I really like this trilogy. All three books are on Audible Escape, so please check it out. This fantasy romance series is fantastic. Also, Ruby Dixon's books are on Audible Escape if you want to check them out. I believe her Dragon series and her Ice Pain Barbarian series are on there, and even some extra ones here and there. Ruby Dixon is one of my favorite authors of all time. I love all of her books, so please go check her out as well. So those are a bunch of recommendations for y'all. Um, those are ones that I have read. Now I'm gonna be talking about the ones that I will hopefully be getting to. So first one, I really want to read All In by Emma Scott. This is the second book to Full Tilt that I talked about earlier. First one is kind of a gut punch ending, so you kind of need to read book two, but I think I was in the middle of the woods or I was camping when I downloaded this book, so I wasn't able to download it. Um, right when I finished book one so I didn't get to finish it when I first read the first book I really want to read this one though I'm really excited I can't tell you what it's about because I'll spoil book one I also want to read uh, the butterfly project by her I don't know what this is about at all but the cover looks amazing um, also sugar and gold by her which I think Brie talked about in her audible escape to read video um, I heard about that book from her again don't remember what it's about but i remember i was really intrigued by the summary when she talked about it i also want to read the other two books a part of the hardigan series by avery flynn the first one is butterface which is like that's the first book to muffin top that i talked about earlier um and this one that one is like our heroine like thinks she's too like ugly and she's never had a boyfriend before and um then i think at a baseball game she like gets on kiss cam or something and uh, this really attractive guy next to her she doesn't think that he'll kiss her but then he actually does and then like he actually wants to like get to know her afterwards and she's like really skeptical as to why <laughs> so there's that one and then the third one in the series is tomboy i don't really know all that much about this one um i'm assuming that our heroine is a tomboy and i think we met her in book two i think she was in book two i think she was best friends to our heroine in book two so very excited for those two i really want to read torn by carrie and cole I think that's what the book is. This one I've heard a lot about on TikTok. I've made like two age gap romance um, recommendation TikTok videos. A bunch of the comments were about this book, Torn by Carrie and Cole. Torn by Carrie and Cole. So all I know is that it's an age gap romance. So hopefully I'll dive into it soon. I also want to read The Fire Between High and Low by Brittany C. Cherry, which is the second book in the Elements series that I talked about earlier. I don't really know about this one, but I know it's going to be a gut-wrenching and emotional one. One that I'm currently reading at the moment is Entreat Me by Grace Draven. This is a Beauty and Beast retelling, fantasy romance by Grace Draven. I am really, really enjoying it. I am loving it. So I'm almost halfway through. I love it so much. All I can tell you is that it's a Beauty and the Beast fantasy romance book. I also want to read The Wild Air by Karina Halley. I've read book one and book two in this royalty romance series. I think this is an arranged marriage royalty romance and I think Brie recently read it and really liked it. And also The Pact by her. I don't remember what this one is about either but I have it on my Kindle library and I really want to listen to it. Ooh, I really want to read the Reluctant Royal series by Alyssa Cole, the first one being a princess in theory. This one is about a woman who keeps getting like spam emails like saying like, oh you're you're a long lost princess or something for a country and she just thinks it's like spam email but she's actually a princess for a country and i think this guy who's like a neighboring prince like comes to seek her out and have her marry him i think that's what it's about i really want to read 
number 1.5 which is can't escape love where a heroine is in a wheelchair i want to read that one so bad i've heard amazing things about that one um i also want to read him by serena bowen this is i believe male male romance dealing with hockey I've heard great things about this one. I also want to read The Choices I've Made by J.L. Berg. Um, J.L. Berg is an author that I've gotten into the past couple years. So basically our hero, uh, after a very long time, he comes back to his hometown, sees his childhood crush Molly, um, and it becomes something more. I don't know, the cover is fantastic for this book. I've always been intrigued by the cover. A lot of people are telling me to read Warrior by Fiona Cole, and I think this has to do with like a, a club like a voyeur club if you know what a voyeur club is um that's all i know about the series um i believe staff from staff's romance book talk really likes this series so i've heard a lot of great things about that series and i know it's on ae i also want to read on the rocks by candy steiner i've read book two in this series which is neat i don't remember what this one is about but i've heard great things about the first book in the series and i haven't read it yet i know i'm not really giving all that many summaries to the ones i haven't read yet but like i haven't read them so i can't really tell you the summary <laughs> oh i also want to read the rest of the gift series by lauren blakely book number two is the virgin gift because i read the engagement gift i talked about it earlier um i really want to read the rest of that series i believe it's just one of the girls who was in the friend group from the first one they're all really short this one's only four hours so very excited for those so i know that long shot by kennedy ryan is on audible escape and i know so many of my friends have read it i feel like i'm the only one that hasn't read it this is a basketball romance but i'm told that it's very emotional <laughs> so we'll see if i get to this one kind of skeptical because i don't want to get my heart broken but i might get my heart broken reading this so we will see oh my gosh i just saw that the bride to by helen huang is on audible escape I need to read that one. That's the second book to the Kiss Quotient, which I still haven't read yet, and this one has autism rep in it. I need to read that one. Okay, I'm definitely gonna be reading that one very, very, very soon. And then, I don't know, this one I've always been very intrigued by. It's called The Curse Giver because of the cover by um, Dora Mach Machado. Dora Machado. Um, the cover has always intrigued me. It's like 20 hours though. I think this is a fantasy romance. So that's all I know about it. The cover has just always intrigued me. Also claimed by L. Kennedy. This is a, I believe, post-apocalyptic romance. I heard Raleigh Marie talk about it. So I know that that one's an audible escape that looks really good. I know Marriage for One by Ella Mays is on here too. That one's also another really long one. I believe this is a marriage of convenience. That's one I might check out. Also The Last Letter by Rebecca Yaros. Um, I got that book for Christmas, I believe, last year, the year before that, from Shelby, from Shelby Tiger Reads, so thank you so much, Shelby. Um, but I know that Steph recently read it, and um, it wrecked her, so um, I'm kind of scared to read it, but I really want to read it, so we'll see if I get to it this month. One that's always looked really interesting to me is A Royal Shade of Blue by even ellis this looks like a royalty romance and the cover just really spoke to me because it's really cute um i don't really know anything other than it's a royalty romance book though <laughs> unfortunately so i don't know a lot of the, the summaries for these books oh my goodness kayla from on the frets one of her favorite books ever is treasure of the abyss by tiffany roberts i think i started reading this one um but i never finished it um so i might do that this is a alien paranormal-esque romance where it has to do with krakens um, very intrigued. I also really want to read Ruby Dixon's um, Dragon Shifter series. I haven't finished those, so I'm definitely going to be getting to those. So those are some of the Audible Escape books that I want to read. I don't know if I'm going to be getting to all of them because there are a lot and I probably missed a ton but there are some recommendations for y'all that I hope you enjoy that I hope you check out. Also let me know if you are going to read as many as possible before the end of October because Audible Escape is ending and it's very sad. But uh, thank y'all so, so much for watching. Please let me know if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.